I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. FDA Commissioner Robert Califf testified about the baby formula shortage during last week's Health Committee hearing. The shortage of infant formula is rooted in supply chain issues from the COVID-19 pandemic and rising inflation, but the shuttering of an Abbott Laboratories facility in February exacerbated the limited supplies. Senator Jackie Rosen echoed other lawmakers' concerns about families being able to access the much-needed formula. Listen in to the Nevada Senator's exchange with the FDA Commissioner. Uh, thank you, Chair Murray and Ranking Member Burr for holding this hearing. Dr. Califf, uh, for your participation and um, your, your clear answers for everyone. You know, my home state of Nevada has been hit especially hard by our current formula shortage. There's a reduction of at least half of available supply. A recent report ranked Las Vegas as the metro area facing the worst shortage in the nation. So our local community organizations in Nevada, we have Three Square, Babies Bounty, the Women and Children's Center of the Sierra, among so many others. They're really doing incredible work to get the formula to those who need it the most, but they are stretched so thin. And so recent actions by the administration are a start. We ha uh, know they have come too late. I know you have addressed uh, some of that, but what I'm concerned about here um, is we talked a little bit about the Forward 21 program, and that's a, a pilot program you're setting up to monitor and report on food supply chain disruption and vulnerabilities. So where's the status of that? Where are we at? And I really want to answer to, before I go to some other Nevada issues, is there a national phone number that parents can, who can't find formula, who can get help? Are families being, is there a place where they can um, do uh, find about homemade recipes. We don't want people making dangerous things, so maybe if you could answer those. Yes, HHS has a website, hhs.gov slash formula, um, and it has all, each of the manufacturers, uh, for example, you have an infant that's been using a particular kind of formula, you can call it, the hotlines are there, and if there's not an answer otherwise, there's a number you can call there for HHS to get help. So that would be the most, um, uh, immediate thing to do if there's a problem. Um, you asked about 21 Forward. Uh, would you like me to comment on that? or? Yes, please, because yeah. I think that would, if we can implement that, they, that may help us uh, going forward with vulnerabilities and supply chain disruption. Well, as I said, we, you know, funding was asked for for that. It wasn't given, so we've uh, borrowed from other FDA programs. We're not where we need to be. Just for example, there are 220,000 registered food facilities in the United States. So a system that is used for infant formula but also has more general applicability to the foods program, it's got to be a robust system, the kind that I'm used to working with in the private sector. Yeah. Uh, we're making progress, but we're nowhere near where we need to be. Well, maybe we can help you with some funding there, but I want to follow up on something Senator Hassan asked about, the distribution of the formula coming in for military flights. Um, how is it being decided beyond existing supply chain routes? Are the areas that are hardest hit with the worst shortages, like Las Vegas and other parts of Nevada, are they being prioritized? Right now, the specialty formulas are the priority, so they're going to wherever babies are who need specialty formula, which could be anywhere. Uh, my expectation, I'm not on the supply chain committee, which as I think you know is a government-wide committee that's been guiding us through the whole pandemic, I would say quite successfully considering the problems that we had early on in the pandemic. And I would expect that they are going to send the more general formula to the places in greatest need at first, including, you know, I think a special problem has been alluded to. If you're in a rural area, you may be a small place, so you wouldn't show up in a general measure. And I know that's going to be taken into account. Um, thank you. you. You mentioned that you weren't on the supply chain committee, but um, I do want to talk about staffing and FDA staffing because according to the American Academy of Pediatrics, FDA has 13 staff members to regulate and monitor safe production of infant formula and no staff assigned to supply chain issues. Um, is this currently still the case? Have you reassigned the staff to oversee the supply chain issues for baby formula? Uh, this 21 forward, uh, this, this formula is essential and children can't, children can't wait. Like you said, it's well, like a pair of gym shoes. As, as I've already mentioned, we brought in staff from other areas of FDA, which means other things are not being attended to that the public um, would expect, but this is the top 
priority, and you know that there is legislation pending that would fund additional people for this purpose. They're desperately needed. We have really only nine because the other four, we just got the funding a couple of months ago, and it's, you know, it's going to take a little while to identify and hire the people. So we've had to bring in other people, but from other programs. Thank you. I see my time is up, Madam Chair. Thank you. 